Hi, my name is Kay McDonald, and I'm the owner of Charity Charms, and welcome to the Power of Charms podcast. Today, I'm really excited to introduce Sarah Binken. She is the founder and CEO of the No Tribe. And um, Sarah, we met in 2018, yes. which is when you launched your company. And um, I was so honored to be one of the first women in her No Tribe book. I've got to show you this. Here we go. Here's the first edition. Here's right. the little write-up. And when we sat down at the Henry that day and I met you, um, so many th fun things happened, but I had no idea that I was becoming part of a worldwide community and an empire and I don't think you had any idea what you what you were starting and it's just so been so exciting one of the fun things that happened that day is I was wearing a bunch of the of my charity charms bracelets and you said oh can you make one of those for the members of the no tribe and I said well absolutely we can so we came up with this fun bracelet that is um uh, pink agate with the beautiful balancing crystal and then the no tribe charm and we change it out every year with the year and um, it's a symbol for all the members it's like a symbol of solidarity right it's like I'm a member of the no tribe you can't buy them um, right. they're just given to each member as they as they come into the no tribe so thank you we're honored to to be a part of that and um, I'm just so excited today to share your story with everybody oh. so um, Give give our audience just a quick description of what the No Tribe is. So, okay. So the No Tribe was created to bring more women to the table. And what we did was we seek out, or what we do is we seek out some of the best and brightest in the cities that we are uh, launched in. And we identify them and then bring them into our tribe. And through the tribe, we also produce a book, which you just shared. So you actually, UK actually are one of the very first 100 the inaugural founding 100 <laughs> in volume one Phoenix, which is actually really awesome. And we probably have a couple thousand now. So, um, so like I said, we really focus on bringing all women to the table, giving them the spotlight, celebrating them for the wins and the hard work and the amazing work they're doing in the community and, and in their industries. And then we build tribe or community around those women. So we host events. We right now we're, you know, we're, we're kind of paused on events through COVID, but we host in-person events. We've moved a lot online. We um, also have society. So we have the book, the tribe and society and society. Society is our online platform for um, growing your business. So we are just constantly inventing new ways to connect and collaborate with women. Every every week, something new comes out from you, and and I sit in amazement. I'm like, does she sleep? I mean, it's just it's just amazing. I I joined the society, of course, and then um, I, I love the fact that you asked me to do a talk about social entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. um, you know giving back to charity so I did that and I'd like to share that with the community um, how many cities are you in now 26 we are in uh, close to 20 now okay. um, so we have 11 more launches coming for 2020 wow uh-huh and you're also and in Canada now too we are. So we actually launched right out into Canada. So Canada was our um, book number two. So we became international very quickly. We started in Phoenix and went to Calgary. And then from Calgary expanded to Florida. So we have five markets in Florida now. We've got three markets in North Carolina. Um, and we have big plans to just expand into every market in the United States and Canada. Right. Okay. So, so you are really serving a very specific niche. Did you realize how big the need was and how big this niche was when you started? Like <laughs> no. what was your, what was your original idea and how has it morphed into what it is today? So, okay. So we started with the book. That was the idea. Let's bring more women to the table. Let's show the, the community who we are. There's a lot of amazing women doing awesome things um, that maybe you don't know, or you haven't, you haven't come across their paths because they're working in a, you know, in a different industry or whatever. So it started with just highlighting women and celebrating them for their accolades. And then we, you know, and then we said, okay, well, you know, we've got some really amazing women in here. We need to build community around these women. They need need to be doing life and doing work and collaborating together and forming partnerships. So that's when the tribe sort of 
uh, came about. But then what's been interesting um, is that the tribe has become the prevailing piece, the piece that's most important. And the book is like, so we're getting women who are like, I just want to be part of the tribe. I don't care about my picture. I don't even want to take a picture. Can I just be part of the group? And, um, and that was something I think that was really surprising. I mean, I have walked into personally as a business owner, I've walked into tons of events and networking. Um, I always have really just been more drawn to women's networking events and, um, and, and those types of like after hours things. I don't do a lot of like, um, co-ed things, but I've walked into so many networking events, not knowing anyone and just feeling judged or feeling like, Oh gosh, I got to get to the bar to like get some liquid courage to talk. To <laughs> right. And so I think so many women are like that. And then coming to Phoenix as a, you know, from a CEO level and not knowing any woman like in my sphere, um, I didn't realize like I knew I was lonely, but I didn't realize like how many other women really lacked true community. Sure. Well, I think also for, and, and for me, me is a perfect example. I, I own my own business. And so I interact with a lot of people, but I'm kind of like up there on my own, mm -hmm. trying to make decisions on my own and just having a community of like-minded business women that you can reach out to at any time. Um, whether you're, you're, you're doing a course or just the networking that, that we've yeah. created. I mean, I have made some amazing alliances. We're in Phoenix with women in Raleigh. You know, I mean, I've, I've talked to a financial gal that I met through the society when, when you did the mentoring thing mm -hmm. and, um, oh gosh, uh, uh, I've recommended some members, you know, for in different cities and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just like a, this prevailing connection and, and a lot of gals in Phoenix too, that I didn't really know very well. I've gotten to know better through the tribe. So that's really cool. And so that's what it's all about. And right. so we've seen the good old boys club long enough. Um, and I talk about these bracelets going back to the bracelets. I say, this is your sorority pin. You know, <laughs> you're now part of the sisterhood. If you have one of these then you're in for life. Um, and I really try to set that tone where, um, we need to give more than we're asking for in return. And I try to set that tone like very early on, even with your book, volume one, it was like, if you're not willing to sit down and have coffee with any woman I put in front of you, just by trust, you have right. to just trust the process, right. then this might not be a good fit for you. Um, yeah. Because we have to come in kind of selflessly to, to pay it forward and to help each other grow because, the, you know, it's a lift and rise mantra. Um, and so we've kind of established that tone throughout all of the cities and all of the books. Mm -hmm. So then you, Carrie, you feel comfortable going to look through and, and reach out to someone in Raleigh or someone in Charlotte or Canada, and you can establish that. So we have sort of like this underground network of high caliber business women, which is so cool. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. And then you did a, a, a new book. Um, was this the best of? Yep. Oh, the best of no. Gorgeous too. Okay, so now, and, and you had a fantastic conference last year, which, which of course I attended and was so inspired. Great speakers, just everybody had a blast. It was so yeah. well done. And so that was all planned for this year. You were at a fabulous spa and, um, and then the COVID-19 hit and then yeah. you moved the date and then it hit again. And, um, you know, I, my clients are nonprofits, so I'm seeing this everywhere. Um, everything's canceling, every, everybody's having to, to rework everything, but they still need to stay in touch with their, with their community, um, fundraise, if, if that's what they need to do. Um, so tell me what, what your big plans are now to stay in touch with your community and um, what you're going to do with the conference going forward. So we actually have the conference still set in um, for November 5th. November oh. 5th through 8th is when we're, we're, God, we're, we're hoping, fingers crossed, we're planning um, for November 5th through 8th. Um, it is, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're actually pivoting a little bit there. We're making it a little bit more intimate. We're bringing in even larger, bigger name speakers just to have a really great draw. And then we're hoping that we'll be able to keep the conference um, around spring 2021. So we'll have one this fall and then we'll have one in 2021. Everything, you know, is fluid, but that's our plan. Um, and if we can't, then maybe we're going to do something virtual. I don't really know what that's going to look like yet, but it still is on schedule at, um, Savannah. Well, hopefully, hopefully. by November, we'll I know have, have some positive, uh, action, positive direction going here. Exactly. So, um, so you won't, okay, so it's now 2020, you started this in 2018, it's boom, it's grown so fast. 
But what's the number one thing this pandemic pandemic has taught you about running a business? What have you had to change that you? Uh, everything. <laughs> Everything. Be, be open to change. That's the biggest thing. Pivot. I talk about pivot a lot. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think it's so important to be, uh, willing to be open-minded. And if it's, if you've got to make some, that's what an entrepreneur does, right? Like if you've right. got to make a quick change, then you just, you go and roll and you really trust your intuition mm -hmm. and, um, and let that be your guide. So for me, it's been, um, just sort of like sitting back trying to determine I birthed no out of like what I needed. So trying to birth, you know, and reconvene, what do I need? What do my women need? Talking to as many women as possible and really trying to figure out how we can keep the connection alive. Like you said, without the in-person events, um, we took every launch event that we had outside of the Phoenix. We got Phoenix launch, but outside of the Phoenix 2020 launch, we ended up having to move all of them to the fall. So like I said, we have 11 tentative launch events happening between September and December. And our goal is to have in-person launch events. And we hope that we can do that. But if not, we're going to do them virtually. I mean, we're just, we're pivoting however we can. Um, and really what we're doing at no specifically, and for me as well, personally, is using this time while it's a terrible time and it's unprecedented and it's, it's just a horrible pandemic we're trying to use this time and leverage it for growing and for knowledge and expansion and if we're in our homes and we're in front of our computers we're doing master classes we are introducing nice. our society members to um at the end of this month to some of this top seven and eight figure ceos and and listening to their stories and trying to learn from them so we're doing a lot of uh, more educational based collaborative zoom calls things like that but what i do want to share is we do have a huge huge initiative that i'm not going to stop just because of covid right um we have our new 501c3 um no cares coming down the pipeline um, and we are hoping to officially launch that at our um, summit in November. Oh, that's fantastic. And that is, that is such an important component of any business, I truly believe, because of the, especially because of the work that I do. But um, it's, it's kind of social responsibility for every single business to have some kind of a give back platform. And uh, with you being such a new business, I'm really, really proud and amazed at you for um, taking the initiative to start something this big and this wonderful and this impactful at this at this time so i think that that's great yeah. and i can't wait to see what develops with that yeah it's gonna it's it's really gonna be amazing i'm excited to really um just pass the torch and fund women's initiatives and yeah. help women grow and and um and and all kinds of things that's we've got cool. a lot in store it's kind of just a wonderful um not a natural transition, but a wonderful addition to what you're doing already. I mean, you're already giving all this wonderful support as far as learning and knowledge and community and interaction and, and uh, uh, networking, we're networking, and now you'll have a financial component to help women too. That's just, I mean, gosh, you've got yeah. a perfect formula, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Um, and also, um, I, I, I seem to notice that you're doing so much. I mean, you always have been great with social media. But it seems like you're trying some new platforms like um, the, the Facebook videos and the Facebook Live and LinkedIn Live and all that kind of stuff. I know you did one yesterday about bootstrapping. Yeah. And um, I love that. I watched that. And yes, as a, <laughs> a women-owned business, yes, I'm a bootstrapper as well. Did you get a good response to that? Yes. So one of the things that is um, that COVID has kind of brought out for, for me is that um, in the past, pre-COVID, I have always been very like leading from behind the scenes. So many times I would go to launch events and people would be like, hi, are you in the book? And I'm like, <laughs> it's actually my book. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, because I really have wanted to make this about all of the women and the community and all of the goodness that we have inside of it. Um, but when COVID hit, I saw this opportunity for us women to really need a leader to stand up and say, okay, 
we've got this girls, let's figure it out kind of thing. And so, um, one of the things that I've done is I've, I've tried to be a little bit more forward facing. Um, yeah. it's not the most comfortable thing for me. Um, naturally I want to be in, in, you know, pushing everyone else along, but what we've now started doing is taking some of those like business know-how that little tips and tricks of, of the trade. Um, you know, I've been a business owner for 12 years and I don't generally lead with my knowledge. I like to facilitate and bring women together, um, and let them lead. Right. So I thought, you know, why not start incorporating some little business nuggets? We always see like, um, the end product of how great a business is or how she's an overnight success. But yeah. Kay, you and I know there's no such thing as an there's overnight, no overnight. Success. <laughs> You know, they, this actually, the truth is, is she's been working on it for the last 10 years and not sleeping while raising babies and cooking dinner and doing laundry, you know? And so I think that it's important to share those stories and also to say, you know, we don't all have access to a lot of funding. We don't all have an amazing investors or trust funds that help us with this. We really um, need to, you know, get creative sometimes. And, and let's talk about that. So that's also too, you'll hear a little bit from me every Monday, I'm going to start sharing on some of the nuggets I've learned along the way. So this week was bootstrapping and three ways to, um, if you're a bootstrapper, three ways to succeed in business with, with no cash flow or little cash flow. And then next week I'll talk about licensing and franchising and how to scale your business. Um, lots of different little topics and nuggets like that. Yeah. That, well, that's really good because it keeps the community together and engaged, which I also think, um, you know, COVID, COVID has, has given us a lot of challenges, but in a way, it, for, for, for something like the No Tribe, it, it, has, it has made the sense of community so much more important, don't you think? Because everybody's sitting at home and now they can finally at least see and talk to each other through a community. So yeah. um, I, I, would, I would have a sense with all that you're doing and all that I'm seeing going on that, that, that is, you're, it's just growing stronger and stronger. Plus, you're able to lay an amazing um, framework for yourself because you're getting all this, you're having time to do all the, learn all these new things, try all these new things right. because in-person events take a lot of time. A lot yep. of time and effort. So now just think all of us are getting so much smarter and so much wiser and so much ah. savvier, savvier and more productive. A lot of it due to all the, all the masterminds and all the information that you're giving us. So kudos to you in like taking this situation, but turning it into something that's a positive. Totally. And that's what I say. Like if you're not growing during this time, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this, yes, it's been challenging and we're pivoting and we're having to reinvent during, you know, certain things or focus on something more than another, but you know, where else does the world literally come to a screeching halt and then slowly, you know, like it's very slow moving right now. This is a great time to really dig in and, um, and grow and learn. And, and, and the quiet time for me, you know, from a CEO visionary perspective, I need that time mm -hmm. because if we're turning and burning books and bringing new people and constantly vetting new members and photo, it's a lot, there's a lot happening. And oftentimes we, you know, as owners need to just kind of sit quietly to figure out how to direct the ship and what's the next thing. So this has actually been, um, sadly a really great time for no and to to bring our women together I think you're exactly right yeah well it's been fun to see everything develop uh, one thing I wanted to really um point out was um when when we had and we still have um this this huge conflict with Black Lives Matters um you stepped right up and did the most eloquent and heartfelt um what do you want to say, messaging. Um, and I was just like, oh my gosh, Sarah, thank you for just taking the lead on that and um, sharing with everybody. And then you now, you now have a diversity um, or a group of intentionally diverse women that you had already started on that before this all happened. Tell me a little bit more about that. So, um, thank you for saying that. I really do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, diversity, her whole book and our concept was birthed out of 
the idea of diversity, right? So diversity amongst skin colors and religions and industries and ages. So that was always um, the core of Knows Values. Mm -hmm. um, and so really what happened in complete transparency, um, last year when we were prepping for the conference, I looked at my speakers list and I realized that we weren't as diverse as we needed to be in regards to speakers and um, participants. Mm -hmm. So what I said was, well, that's going to change. This is totally not no. This is not why we, and I think it's good to have self-check moments like that too. Like, wait, wait, wait. Our, this is not what it was meant to be. So we need to do better. So I set out through our fall launches to talk to some of our women of color and some of our women with various lived experiences and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I would like to create a diversity team um, board so that we can really focus on how we can become um, more diverse, how we can include inclusion, and how is that gonna look? And I don't need this to just be me, I need all voices. So I did that, um, it was very, everybody was interested. I set up a call um, and we selected seven women from all different um, cities, they're all book members, uh, are all members and they're all in books. Um, they're all super high level and many of them are, um, have a background and either social responsibility or diversity and inclusion, or they're women of color business owners, because that's what we needed to hear the voice of. Mm -hmm. um, so we set that out and um, selected them in the beginning of the year. We've been meeting secretly behind the scenes for months, just identifying what we want to do and how we want this to do. And we realized it's a two part um, step. It's, it's, um, it's looking at retention. So the women that are currently in our tribe and making sure they're all feeling safe and comfortable to come to the table. And then it's also looking at recruitment and how do we get different faces inside of no. So we've been working on all of that. And so when, um, the black lives um, matter movement really came to the forefront, you know, several weeks ago, we were not ready to launch, but I said, we have to do like, we, it's everybody game. Like we've got to do this now. And, um, so we introduced our team, and, um, and we've since put out a resource guide. We very quickly wanted to make sure that our members knew that we were here for them, but mm -hmm. we're not an activist group. We're a, you know, we're a group of high caliber business women who focus on collaborating. So through the resource guide, we wanted to identify women that you could like immediately engage with. So if you wanted to build something in your business or you wanted to seek some training, here are the women that you can connect with. And then our, um, our team is actually still, we're still working behind the scenes to figure out some of the different things. We'd already, before this happened, realized that we were going to um, require ambassador training within diversity. So we're doing, um, we're gonna build out a whole program for each ambassador and contributor to take a course um, just to talk about what's acceptable vernacular and what's not acceptable and what is this all lives versus black lives and all that, you know, what does that mean? And right. I'm scared and, and you know, all of that. So we just wanted to come to the table with super, super, um, you know, positive conversations. Too. Positive and honest and, and needed. Um, so thank you for that. I think Thanks. that's very bold, brave and, um, visionary. For sure. Um, so do you have a vision for the next five years, like where you want to be in five years with now? I'm yeah. sure you do, but of course everything's changed. But <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so the vision really hasn't changed too much. What we're doing now is we, um, I think it was best that, um, that Jen Gettemer said it this way. She said, you know, during COVID and during these times, you have two, you know, two scales. And and you're not really changing your business, maybe you're just focusing on one more than other. So right now we're focusing on our online initiative, society and growth and things like that. But that doesn't mean that we've killed everything that we had planned. So for me, the next five years um, is really to focus on impact mm -hmm. through no cares um, and through everything that we do. So we just want to get better, just keep getting better, keep, keep going into more cities, keep expanding, but then really um, 
turn into this impact. I envision doing um, pitch competitions for aspiring female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and um, granting awesome. them funds to start their business. Yeah. I imagine doing um, like mentorship through our book and our on the rise sections um, becoming our mentees and, and we're partnering them with some of the women who are in our community um, so that they can learn from. And one of the things that has been probably um, the saddest in my mind that we had, we weren't ready for when COVID hit was the emergency relief fund for female business owners. Um, that is the number one initiative, I think. Well, one of my number one initiatives, yeah, yeah. um, is to create a fund for female business owners who are struggling to be able to apply and get grants now. Right. So I think with, um, the enormity of our tribe, we're able to fundraise within our membership, but then also with this 501c3, looking to corporate partners um, to help us fund some of our um, larger mm -hmm. events and 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 you know and and pitch competitions and, and all kinds of things. So I think we're going to shift into really impact. Well, you certainly have made a huge impact in two years. <laughs> so I, can't, I cannot wait to see what's ahead. Um, is there anything that, that I haven't asked that you want to talk about that we haven't covered that might be on the horizon or we've covered a lot? I know we have covered a lot. Um, I think that, you know, just, I think it's just in closing just to say that, um, you know, the journey is not easy and as business women, we know that. And if we can just remember to be a light to all women yeah. and know that if you're struggling, you need community, you don't know where to turn, there's a place in no. And we've made sure that we have created some kind of opportunity for every single woman out there. So yeah. And, and every, okay. anyone can join no now, is that correct? They can join society. And then we have tribe events that are open to the public for non-members. Okay. Um, and then of course we have our um, free Facebook group that we created on the onset of COVID just as a way to provide support to women, all women. And so you can come and be a part of those conversations. Um, if you know you're not at the caliber yet, you're just getting started, maybe you're not quite ready for the book or there's still a little bit more work to do, you can certainly take advantage of some of those free opportunities. Um, and some of the other like non-member opportunities to connect, or you can join society and really get the know-how and knowledge. And then if you are at a high level and high caliber, I actually um, am working on something else. I'm not ready to share. Yet. <laughs> of course, one more you final are. piece to the puzzle. <laughs> one more final piece. To the we'll be looking now. COVID's pushed that out to 2021. But yeah. Okay, so um, to to wind this up, if somebody wants, if somebody knows knows nothing about no. Um, they should go to your website, which is no.com, no tribe, no tribe.com. No no tribe okay. And, um, is there a phone number they can call or an email that's good to reach out to, or should they just contact you through the website? The best thing to do is every bit of information is laid out perfectly on the website, the no tribe.com and it's K N O W the yep. no tribe.com. Um, check us out on Facebook or Instagram at no tribe. And um, if they want to send us an email, they can always do that through the website, but hello at the No Tribe Works as well. And um, yeah, that's definitely the best way to connect. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. You are uh, just a true inspiration and uh, making such a positive impact in our world with women and with everyone around you. So you have a great day. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.